Welcome again to Fresco Online, your online resource for information on custom foot orthotics, AFOs, custom molded shoes and prosthetics. In this section, we're going to take a look at treating partial foot amputees and providing the appropriate partial foot prosthesis. In the simplest cases, you may find that the patient is missing a single digit or perhaps the first and second on the foot. In those cases, you'll just use a custom foot orthotic and provide the filler in the appropriate space. As the amputation levels progress, different considerations come into play. And when the patient has a transmetatarsal amputation, you may be able to use a toe filler, but we need to begin to consider the ramifications on the patient's gait. Some of the concerns for patients that have transmetatarsal amputations, or even at higher levels, such as Liz Franks and Chopart, is to be able to restore some normal gait function for that patient, protect the residuum of the foot, and keep them in a comfortable shoe. Most notably, as the amputation proceeds and becomes more severe, the calcaneal angle tends to drop on the foot. This has two immediate concerns. The first is, with the drop of the calcaneal angle, it means the medial and lateral malleoli tend to drop, and as a result, you're introducing a leg length discrepancy for that particular patient. Secondly, the calcaneus itself can migrate posteriorly, and we often see this as a bulbous rear foot on a patient with a Liz Frank or Choparts amputation. This leads to difficulty fitting the patient inside regular shoes. One method to treat these conditions is to provide the patient with a custom foot orthotic with a socket type design that accommodates the residuum of the foot. The advantage of a socket design is that it is total contact, so it alleviates any pressure points, and uh, being total contact, it will reduce the possibility of shear on the residuum, especially on the distal end of the foot. As you build up the foot orthotic portion, you can have the socket with a soft interface, so it's easy on the skin. You have a slight anterior wedge to restore the calcaneal pitch for the patient. And then you begin to build the uh, partial foot prosthesis or the toe filler portion. This you would do in conjunction with the actual shoe that the patient is going to wear the device in. These partial foot prosthesis can then be used quite easily in conjunction with dynamic carbon AFOs. This is an example of a dynamic carbon AFO with a full length foot plate and a lateral strut that then goes, proceeds up the lower leg and becomes a uh, shield on the tibial crest. The foot orthosis portion with the partial foot prosthesis can be machined directly to manage and fit the contour of the foot plate and also machined so that it fits inside the shoe that the patient is going to wear. This combination has many advantages. It exactly matches the residuum of the foot. It has a soft interface to allow some bending on the distal end of the foot. The rigid carbon portion allows for energy storage during what would have been heel lift and heading into the propulsive phase of gait. And that can then be returned as the patient goes into the toe-off phase of gait. Finally, having the tibial crest plate allows for some energy transfer away from the plantar aspect of the foot, reducing the possibility of further ulcerations. First of all, the shoe selection is critical. These devices work best where the shoe goes to at least the height of the malleolus, meaning a chukka height, and would work even better in a case where you go to a high top shoe or a hiking boot style design. That allows the residuum to remain well seated inside the shoe and it makes sure that there's plenty of room for both the orthosis and for the AFO portion. It's also important to consider patient selection when considering this device. The more active the patient, the higher the shoe needs to be in order to contain the foot. For further information on the use of a partial foot prosthesis in conjunction with a dynamic carbon AFO, please go to our website, persco.com, click on the education tab, 
and in there there's an article on managing partial feet. There's both a paper and a summary article that was printed in the OMP Edge that will outline more of the criteria and the patient selection for this kind of device. Thank you once again for joining us at Hersco Online.